Hi, my name is Torben Janssen and I'm the author and founder of ThoughtsOnJava.org. Do you know this situation? You just deployed your application to production and your customers start complaining about performance issues. None of these problems occurred on your test system and you now have to fix them quickly or roll back your deployment. I had these situations quite often until I found out how you can find them during development. Let's have a quick look into one of the lectures of my Hibernate performance tuning training where I show you how to do that. Hibernate of course knows about everything that went on during a session and the Hibernate statistics component can collect and present metrics about it. But this component has to be activated because collecting this information is quite expensive. So please, do only activate the Hibernate statistics on your development and test systems. Otherwise, you might create the performance problems yourself. You need to set the system property hibernate.generateStatistics to true to activate the Hibernate statistics component. You can also do this in the persistence XML file and I used this for the code samples of this course. But for real projects I prefer the system property because I can change it without changing the application. When you activate the Hibernate statistics you should also set the log level for org.hibernate.stat to debug to get even more information about each JPQL and Quartivia query. When you do this, you get such a log message for each JPQL and Quartivia query. It shows the query and two interesting information at the end of the log message. The first one shows the time spent to execute this query and the second one shows the number of returned rows. Both values can help you to identify performance issues. The benefit of the first one is quite obvious. You can see how long the execution of the query took and you can use it to identify slow database queries. I will get into more details about how you can improve the performance of database queries in the second part of this course. The number of returned rows can indicate inefficient implementations. If you find a query which returns several hundreds or even thousands of rows, you should have a more detailed look at it and check how you process all these information and if that can't be done by the database. Quite often you could do the same with a simple database function and just select the result of it. I discussed the execution of data heavy operations via stored procedures and database functions in the fourth part of this course. The session matrix are more useful if you just want to check for performance issues and are not analyzing the performance of a specific session. The amount of data might be a little bit overwhelming in the beginning. I therefore highlighted the most important parts. The first one is the time spent for all JDBC statements. If Hibernate spent a lot of time on JDBC statements, it's most often either caused by one or more slow queries or by a huge number of performed JDBC statements. You can see the number of performed statements here. You should always check if Hibernate performed more queries than you expected. Even 10 or 20 unexpected statements can be caused by an n plus 1 select issue, which resides in several hundreds or even thousands of queries on the production database. JDBC batching is deactivated by default and this number will therefore be zero on most systems. I explain the benefits of JDBC batching in module 16 and if you decide to activate it, you should have a look at this number to see how efficient Hibernate can use the batches. And the last numbers show the operations on the second level and the query cache. Put operations are updates on the cache, hits are elements which Hibernate found in the cache and didn't need to get from the database, and misses are elements which Hibernate didn't find in the cache and had to retrieve from the database. Both caches are deactivated by default and I explain more about them in the modules 11 and 12. This method is quite simple. It uses a query to get all author entities from the database and then iterates through all of them and writes a log message with the author and the number of books he or she has written. And then I commit the transaction. 
So what do you think? How many SQL statements will Hibernate execute for this method? Hibernate reports in its session metrics that it executed 12 statements within this session. There are probably a few more than you expected. And that is often the case when you use JPA or Hibernate. It is very difficult to correctly guess the number of queries Hibernate will perform. You have to know all details of your entity model and, as in this case, you sometimes even need to know how many records a query returns. As you can see up here, Hibernate first executes a query to select all records from the author table. That is the query I called in the test method and it returned 11 rows. I let Hibernate map these rows into 11 author entities and iterate through them. When I call the getBooks method to write the log message, Hibernate has to perform an additional query for each author to initialize the author book relationship. These are the 11 additional queries that Hibernate executed in this session and I will show you how to prevent them in the query specific fetching module. As you have seen, Hibernate provides you a lot of internal information which can help you to find performance problems. You now just have to fix them. In the next video, I will show you how you can fix one of the most common ones, the n plus one select issue. Until then, activate Hibernate statistics in your current project and let me know what you find out. Bye.